absolute banger coming up this weekend in the bantamweight division we have not one but two of my guys facing off against one another we have the former m1 global bantamweight champ sergey morozov representing kazakhstan now listen kazakhstan stand up they had a big weekend last weekend with the win of shavkat rachmanov on the main card of that fight night getting the win over carlston harris and that guy is a force to be reckoned with at welterweight morozov looking to make a name for himself and continue with his winning ways he was unsuccessful against umar Nurmagomedov in his debut he was a giant underdog he was in the realm of a plus 400 but his last time out took on khalid taha and he was able to really enforce the game plan that he had over with m1 global and if you like a morozov fight it's gonna get dirty it's gonna get gritty He's going to strike to clinch, clinch to take you down. And once he's got you down, you're in a lot of trouble. Now, he's taking on one of the most interesting men in MMA in Douglas Silva de Andrade. And if I could give him a nickname that's not D Silva, it would be the Henri Richard nickname. And I don't know wow, I like if it. Douglas has a brother, but his older, bigger brother would be Vitor Belfort. So he is, by proxy, the pocket rocket. And it's not like a soft core type of thing. Wow. But this guy is... One of my favorite fighters to watch, and I'm not even joking, Matt. You know how excited I get about a De Silva fight. He's just so explosive at 36 years of age. And I know we talk about, oh, the lighter weight classes. You've got to worry about them when they get, you know, 33, 34, 35. Silva Andrade, like, hold my beer. I don't get tired. I don't get old. I'm still the same fighter I've always been. And it has been interesting because you look at him and his fighting style, everything he does requires a massive amount of energy. He's not somebody who works behind the jab, really settles into a fight. But he does have pretty good staying power at this stage of his career for being so old in the division. And if you look at it for De Silva, 20 of his 27 pro wins by knockout, which is insane. <laughs> Check yourself before you wreck yourself. The craziest part is, too, you'd think an older guy, you're going to start to have trouble making the weight, but making the weight's That's never truly been an issue on the scale for De Silva. However, he's had six fights at Bantamweight in the UFC. I gotta talk about some of these names because you look at his last fight, he took on a credentialed kickboxer in Gaetano Perello and knocked him dead with a hook. And it was over in the first round incredibly quickly. But I mean, four and two in the UFC at Bantamweight and he has some fights at Featherweight. His debut against Zubair Takugov. That's a tough one. And that was back in 2014, mind you. He has a win over the greatest bantamweight of all time, not Dominic Cruz, Hannon Burrell. He has a win over Hannon Burrell at Featherweight Strong. and a loss to Lerone Murphy, which I think very highly of Lerone Murphy. So again, play this game as you will. But I look at this overall, again, you have a loss against Rob Fawn at bantamweight. All right. He has a loss to Piotr Jan. It was a bad one, but okay. I mean, again, Matt, like I... I it is tough. I mean, you look at some of the wins. Henry Briones, but he did very, very well. And then I really look at the style of Silva de Andrade because he has all of those knockouts. But if you really do look at it, I mean, 66% takedown defense. And the guys that have taken him down, Takugov, Font, Jan, Barrow, and Murphy. But if you look at it, he was able to get takedowns against Briones, Font, Vera and Murphy so kind of crazy to see that especially from a guy that you think of as man this guy's just some s smaller in terms of his stature but bigger striker without a doubt and I would say his best win is the win over Marlon Vera like that's a fight that a lot of people forget about it was early on in Vera's career but people forget that was sort of the first rise of Marlon Vera he lost that fight and then he's had a great resurgence ever since but for Andrade this could be a really interesting fight because he's so good offensively in the positions where he does excel at but defensively, he does leave a lot to be desired. Like, Andrade kind of reminds me of Donovan Mitchell when Rudy Gobert isn't in the lineup for the Utah Jazz. The offense is great, but then you look at what happens on the other side of the floor, and you're like, okay, well, if you're scoring 30, but the guy you're guarding is also scoring 30, what are we really doing right now? Like, we're still, uh, we're even. And with Andrade, that's what I worry about. Like, could he hurt Morozov? Without a doubt. He could hurt him in the first, second, or third round. But let's say he gets a little reckless going for the finish. Let's say he does leave himself open to get taken down in a weird exchange. I think Morozov's going to be able to just ride out whatever time he needs to on top. And I don't even think he's going to have to be that active once he does get the top position. If he does just go half guard, full guard, use a lot of his weight, I really do think that physically he's going to be able to wear down Andrade as this fight goes on. For D Silva, still training at home in Brazil. For Sergei Morozov, he used to be out of Erkan Kusha and he's made the move over to American Top Team. And I love who his coach is because it's not spending a lot of time with Mike Brown or Conan Silvera. 
It's time with Marcus Damata, and I am a big Damata guy because if you look at it for Morozov, that's the perfect guy to train that wrestling, positionally aware type of game. And for Morozov, in that fight against Kalataha, he went 6 of 16 in his takedown attempts, so think Nick Maximov. That was the worst fight ever. And good. 8 minutes and 34 seconds of control time in that fight, all three judges scoring at 30-27 against the guy who is known for upper body strength, his own wrestling, and wonky Taekwondo type striking out of Khalid Taha when he is able to fight. So when I do look at this fight, Matt, the odds, Sergey Marzov opens a favorite, minus 200. He's a minus 220 right now. For D Silva, open a plus 170. He's plus 177. If we have a look at the topology vote, surprised us there to you. I'll say the over under at 67.5% for Morris. I think it'll be over. You think it's going to be over? It's slightly over. 743 total votes, 72% Morozov, 87% by decision. For the 28% that I have, De Silva, 70% by decision, 19% by knockout. Again, this to me is a really tricky one. It's one of those ones we talked about these fights last weekend. It's either going to be Morozov, rinse and repeat. Or D Silva is going to be able to defend a few of those takedowns and make it really interesting on the feet. And I really do like this fight. I so do I. But this is the way I think the fight's going to go. I agree with you. I think Andrade will be able to defend a few of the initial takedown attempts. But think about Morozov is that he's like a pit bull on a bone. He's not going to stop the second he gets that first one. That's an insensitive one. Is it? What? Ah, uh, his. Continue like a dog on. on a bone. For Sergey Morozov, when he does get that leg, he does like to chain a lot of his wrestling attempts together. And I do think Andrade is going to have a really hard time keeping up with the wrestling attack of Morozov. Could he defend the first takedown attempt? Of course he could. Could he defend the second one? Probably. I just think that as this fight progresses, and again, this isn't a knock on Andrade's cardio either. I just think that as you are defending a lot of those takedown attempts, Morozov is going to pull you into the deeper waters. There's a couple of things too with Douglas Silva de Andrade. He's the type of guy to strike and then reset and, uh, and a lot of people do that you don't see a lot of people that fluidly strike side to side there's one guy and again it's it's because of the recency bias from last weekend that i like to talk about a guy that just will strike and strike and strike and strike and will reset if he gets the opportunity and it's julian arosa douglas silva de Andrade does not strike like that at all it's it's my combinations and my set ways and then i reset a good opportunity for morozov to get the takedown and for Morozov, level competition over with M1's a little weird because he has some decent wins. I mean, he's a mortal en enemy of the Ultimate Fighter, I guess, contestant Josh Reddinghouse. One loss by finish, but then he ends up finishing or, or getting the win over Josh Reddinghouse for the title. And then a finish loss to Mavzar Evliev in the third round of their title fight. But when it comes to this one... I think Silva D'Andrade is going to catch him on the feet. I really do like Morozov. He's one of those guys that I've hyped up for a long time since his time with M1. I just think D Silva still has it in the tank to get the win. But again, to me, it's either one or the other in this one. Yeah, I like Morozov by decision. I really do. I do think that the pressure and just the overall wrestling game of Morozov is going to give Andrade a lot of problems. Now, could Andrade hit him with a big shot and guillotine him in the first round? Of course he could. That's the kind of fighter he is. But I do like Sergey Morozov in this one. I'm taking the unknown of the Brazilian pocket rocket Doug is Silva de Andrade but again Matt Morozov big time opportunity to go out there and slam home a decision win and another one for Kazakhstan we're split on the pick so let us know down below maybe it can be a little bit of a tiebreaker in the comments section who you have in this bantamweight marquee fight we got a big time one in our main event a middleweight between Israel Adesanya and Robert Whitaker you're not going to want to miss this keep it locked in with fight name picks so we always say let's, let's get, get into it, into it.